If there is a favorite to finish in the top two, it would be 27-year-old Josh Davis, triple gold medalist from the 96 Olympics, most gold rowdy by any American man at those games. You know, I have seen Josh Davis take a lot of races out very fast, but I've never seen Josh take it out that fast. And he's still ahead of world record pace of the half. Davis looks like he's going to win it, and Davis sets an American record. He breaks a 12-year-old mark. What a swim for Davis. Welcome to the Ultimate Swimmer Podcast. I'm your host, three-time Olympic gold medalist and captain of the 2000 USA team, Josh Davis. Here at Ultimate Swimmer, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you to be the very best version of you, physically, mentally, and spiritually, on your swimming journey. This podcast is geared primarily for those of us in the aquatic disciplines of age group swimming, college swimming, para swimming, open water swimming, and master swimming. But we welcome all who are interested in peak performance, pursuing excellence, and swimming with purpose. So whether you are just starting out in the pool or you've been swimming your entire life, you were born for the water and you were also born for greatness. So each week we will explore the seven core habits of achieving greatness that will help take you to the next level in your journey to becoming an ultimate swimmer. This episode is brought to you by Breakout Swim Clinics, the longest running swim clinic tour of swimming Olympians in U.S. history. Breakout Swim Clinics has been providing swim clubs with the biggest Olympic names for the best prices with gold medal service since 1997. Go to BreakoutSwimClinic.com and bring some of their great Olympians to your team to help your swimmers break out. Bigger names, better prices, gold medal service. Break out with the best. BreakoutSwimClinic.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Ultimate Swimmer podcast show. I'm your host, Josh Davis. Really excited to visit with this person who's been on the show before. She's a fan favorite, Kelsey Worrell. She's been, uh, excuse me, Kelsey Worrell Dahlia. Sorry, Kelsey. <laughs> there you go. I That's knew, okay. I, I knew you long enough before you were married. I still got Worrell <laughs> in my head. But, but Kelsey Dahlia, and um, you, you, 2015, you kind of made your mark on the international scene. Uh, with your first USA team and being the first woman to go 49 seconds in the hunter fly, which is so cool. And then 2016, you got the gold medal in Rio. 2018 at the World Champs, you got nine medals, unbelievable. And uh, 2019, good stuff too. And then 2020, uh, we get postponed. 2021, missed the team, which we'll explore a little bit. But now you're back in ISL almost doing best times, just missed a best time last week. Um, I did go a best time last week in the 50. Oh, yeah. Way to go. Yeah. Yep. So still <laughs> doing best times. Now your fifth year as a professional swimmer. Yeah. Starting my, just started my sixth. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So just unbelievable, your longevity and your perseverance and your perspective. So uh, but first, I want to say happy Thanksgiving. This is the day after Thanksgiving, and hopefully the folks in Eindhoven maybe gave you a little Thanksgiving food. <laughs> <laughs> they had, we had a Dutch version of Thanksgiving, so we didn't have stuffing, but they did a great job with the, the gravy, potatoes. Still, miss their, their version of sweet potatoes was, I'm pretty sure, a carrot puree, so that kind of missed the mark, but they got the cranberry sauce and their attempt on peak pumpkin pie. So we had a version of Thanksgiving. That was nice of them to try. It so, was. They did their best. <laughs> now, Cali Condors has a pretty good mix of uh, Americans and internationals, but it's, how would you say the percentage is? It's about 60% American, would you say? I'd say so. We definitely changed a lot of our roster this year with the addition of the draft and so last year our whole women's side was American and so some people have retired and moved on so we filled our roster with some more European women and um, some more international men on the guy side too so it's really fun I think we still do a good job blending in together and supporting each other really well. I Two thoughts first I love how the ISL brings the sewing world closer where you just get to meet all these folks from around the world that normally you don't get to visit with very much. I mean, you kind of wave to them after the race is done at a big world champs, but you really don't get to know them that well. But now in ISL, especially in the bubble format, 
uh, you're, you're really getting to know these people. And I just love how it makes the swimming world smaller because we really are, have, we have so much in common and just love the sport. And uh, it's just, I just love that aspect. How, how have you enjoyed getting to know the other folks? Oh, it's been great. I never would have had these relationships if it wasn't for us. All these, we do have some girls that swim in NCAA, but we were different events or different conferences. So we never really crossed paths too much. And now as I'm older too, I haven't even overlapped with a lot of these people in the, the college system. So it's really, really cool to get to meet so many people from all over the world and get to like bounce different ideas off in terms of how their training goes and race strategies. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. Well, when Jason was putting together the team three years ago, uh, he called me and, you know, he said, uh, do you have any ideas? I said, you've got to sign Kelsey. <laughs> you got to sign Kelsey. That's She's a racer. She's a gamer. Yeah, thanks for vouching for me. I'm, so, we've had a, a stud squad all three years and we've, we've had a couple off meets this year. Wanda got the best of us, but I think that um, we'll be, we'll have a, we haven't shut all of our cards yet. So I think we'll have it all lined up at the right moment for the final next week. It sounds like y'all are able to keep your energy and motivation pretty high. I guess the uh, the rivalries build and the different, you know, just going against different folks and there's the, the excitement of the format. Uh, I mean, sounds like y'all's energy is still pretty high. I mean, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. The coaching staff also does a good job of allowing us to rotate some different events and try different things. And we have a strong squad. So if it's if we anticipate it not being as tough of a match, maybe we'll arrest people here and try people in, in different ways so we can save our energy when we really need it most. But right now we have at the, the least amount of time between matches is four days. So it's almost every weekend we race. And so it's enough time to recharge and rest. And it's so gloomy right now in Eindhoven that we don't really want to do much exploring and sightseeing. So I'm getting so much sleep and enjoying just the racing. I think just getting that much racing and allows you to get sharper and sharper each time. So I'm not sick of it yet. That's fascinating. I love that. Yeah, just racing and sleeping. I mean, that's kind of a good training cycle. It's uh, really benefited a lot of people these last three mm -hmm. seasons. So I, I, yeah. I the people that have kept a positive <laughs> attitude and have you know gotten into it have benefited. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a good amount of time. I think anymore, it gets a lot tougher to be away from home right now. It will, it'll be four weeks away from home and Budapest was tough. We were away almost six. And so I think there's definitely a balance in there, but having a great team and fun teammates around makes it fly by. Yeah. Who are, what are, can you give us a little insight into some fun interactions at team meetings or anybody does something funny or anybody give a great motivational speech or anything that the coaches or athletes have done that's kind of funny or unique or special? Uh, well, yesterday was just really special on Thanksgiving, our head coach is Jeff Julian. And so he brought us all together and we didn't go around and saying what we're all thankful for, but he really came together, brought us together to share how grateful he is. He's had two bouts with cancer over the last few years. And so every day is not guaranteed for him. And so just challenging us to live like that as well, to be in the moment and be really grateful for each day that we have. And so it doesn't really get much better than that. And he does a, a great job of, of getting our team together, has a good pulse of what we need. And so that was a, a really special meeting that we had to celebrate Thanksgiving. Oh, that's cool. I'm glad he shared that. He's, uh, yeah, he's an inspiration for sure. Um, speaking of motivation and perspective, um, you went through a tough time not making the team over the summer, and yet now you still enjoy racing, you're still enjoying training. You've, you've, I, I think you found your why a long time ago. You found purpose in swimming to be able to weather the ups and downs a long time ago. So, but maybe you can share with us, if you're willing, whatever you're willing to share, what was going through your mind, June, July, August, recalibrating, regrouping, processing that huge disappointment. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, still, still getting back into it and enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of layers to unpack there for sure. But 
going into 2021 as compared to 2016 where I was an underdog as much as I tried to not put the pressure on myself it, it was definitely there and so walking on deck this time around was a lot heavier and a lot harder to just stay in my own lane I think and I tried my best to focus on reminding myself of how consistent I was in training and the work that I had done but at the end of the day uh, Claire and Tori were were the best ones and they lined up and Click Kate Douglas had a great final as well and so uh, ending up fourth, I'm still really proud. I still had some of my best swims personally that I had had in a couple of years. And so I was really proud of how I swam. And so there was nothing to, that I left in, I left everything in the pool. I was, I didn't walk away. Obviously I wanted to make the team, but I knew that they were the best representatives. And I still did watch the Olympics that summer. I had so many friends on the team and I wanted to still watch them and cheer for them as they were racing. And so seeing how fast the final was actually made me feel a little better because knowing if all the stars align, I, I wouldn't have been able to go as fast as they did. So it almost made me feel a little better how fast they went. And, and I was really happy for Tori and exciting to see how, how they continue in their careers. And so I didn't take too much time out of the water, actually. Um, I was swimming at an outdoor club this summer my husband and I would just swim together and swimming outside to me is therapy and when I'm not getting my times I'm just swimming for the enjoyment of it there's no pressure on it and it's relaxing and therapeutic and so that's why I was swimming and also because I didn't want to disappoint Jason Lezak for my SL season so I wanted to make sure he wasn't disappointed because he was I was one of the first people he announced that he was re-signing for this season so I, I wanted to make sure he was, wasn't disappointed with that decision. And I also knew I can't stand how quickly I lose the feel of the water and how terrible it is swimming out of shape, coming back in to the start of the season. So that was also why I was motivated because I didn't wanna be drowning going back to practice. So I made fun, I had fun ways of swimming and I honestly have done singles since trials and it's been so enjoyable. I've really found a lot of joy in being a normal person outside the pool and just swimming once a day. <laughs> I did a single one time, uh, a whole whole year of it, and I was really close to my best times just because I went really hard for that two hours, two and a half hours, and then a 24-hour rest cycle was really nice. And It has been really nice, and it also allows me to go a little harder in the weight room, so I think I've got a lot of strength over the last four or five months as well. And so that's been a lot of fun. I, I historically haven't really loved weightlifting, but over COVID, I really started enjoying it because it was one of the few things I was able to stay consistent in. And so now just swimming once a day and lifting, I'm able to really push it a little more because I'm not trying to swim as many yards and my shoulders aren't as, as sore. So I'm sleeping better. Just a lot of things are a lot better. <laughs> yeah, well, it's fun that we, you have the time and the continuing seasons to experiment with these different things to figure out what mm -hmm. works. Because every year your, your body changes, you get older and how do you increase the stimuli but yet get the recovery you need to make use of that mm -hmm. hard work, that breakdown. Yeah, and this is also my 10th season in the University of Louisville. So. I wanted to mix it up there. I love the coaching staff there and they've been super flexible, allowing me to switch things up. Our sprint program really exploded this last year more than ever. We had our first relay win in the 200 medley relay on our men's side. And so started working with our coach, Chris Lindauer and doing a, a lot less aerobic, just but just keeping that base where it needs to be. And then just really focusing on the sprint side of things and it's a, a different stimulus for sure. A lot more open intervals, but oh man, it, it's nauseating. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. When, when, when you fire the gun all the way and doesn't matter how much rest you're getting, you're going to get tired. Right. That lactic acid really builds up. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's cool. Is there, is there a new favorite set that has emerged this last, you know, season? Our, our weekly race set was has been 650s on two minutes 
So trying just to raise the bar and I'm going over a second, second and a half faster than I would if we're doing them on a minute or 110. So that's been fun to see myself even try to get better. I can't remember the last time I felt like I'd been getting better in practice, which is sad to say, but having the new stimulus and mixing things up, I feel like I've gotten better and, it, and it's showing in racing here. Now those 650s on the two minutes, are those from a dive or a push? They're from a push. Oh, okay, okay. Do you mm -hmm. normally do it yards or short course meters? Or does it just depend? We haven't had a chance to do short course yards. So it's been, it, it, yeah, short, no short course meters, just yards. And this is after we do some uh, power work as well. So already doing some bucket work and starts and runners. So it's not quite fresh, still a little bit stimulus beforehand, but um, I'm pretty toast after. <laughs> yeah, what, what do you hold on those 650s? Can you tell us what's your average? On yeah, those? so I started, I would do three fly and then three free, and I would hold 24 mids fly and 23 mids free. Wow. Okay, good. That's inspiring. For, for girls <laughs> and guys. So guys, yeah. you gotta hold 24s for the flies and 23s <laughs> for the <flies. laughs> I love it. Um, well, thanks for sharing that. Can you give us a, a little more um, insight in how you dealt with the disappointment? Obviously, I, I agree with you, swimming outdoors with your husband is a perfect distraction because you just remind you the love of the water, you're doing it with a friend, you're you're getting ready for the next season you're you know you've got another thing to look forward to the isl season three so i think there was some some healthy distractions you know that made getting back in the water fun but um what 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 else do you do to kind of keep perspective on the highs and lows mm -hmm. well when i first didn't make the team i was going to sleep Trying to fall asleep, not really getting much sleep after the final hunter fly. I was just praying and asking God, okay, what do you have for my summer now? You know, I have this black hole of the summer, nothing planned. Okay, well, I guess I can do some clinics or something. And at that moment, thinking about sharing how I was feeling and sharing my story, it was literally one of the last things I wanted to do. But God really worked on my heart. And I had been in touch with a a guy from my church who has some ministries in the Dominican Republic called Go Ministries. And he had been wanting for me to come visit in the Dominican. And so I texted him. I said, hey, I'm not, I got some free time now. And so I came back from trials on a, a Monday and then I left for the Dominican on Sunday. And <laughs> I flew out for a few days and really just to see how God's working down there. And they have a few different arms of their organization where they're doing church planning, sports ministry, medical missions, and community outreach. And so I got to speak with some sports teams and got to see all that they're doing in the community there. And it's totally different where they're just trying to teach kids and build leaders rather than these huge baseball, they're known for baseball, but you have to be top notch to be in these baseball academies, but that's not, they're the opposite. They just want anyone to come and build pe people up and help them become leaders. So I got to speak with a basketball group and a volleyball team and then ran into someone else and it's a small community there. And I got to speak with a, a swim team as well and actually got to go for a swim, which was really enjoyable and made my body feel really good. So getting to speak with some swim swimmers there as well. And so um, just really my message was that even though I didn't make the team the last five years hadn't been for waste that God was still working in that and I had still learned a lot and I'm, I'm still learning and figuring out the purpose in all of it They're definitely still disappointed that I wasn't able to represent Team USA this summer but God had other plans I got to spend a lot more time with my family I don't get to go visit my parents in New Jersey very often but got to visit my summer team for the first time and like six years and um, so there's still some uh, really there was some really cool moments that I wouldn't have had if I had been gone all summer yeah I think that's great that you're able to find that balance and find that perspective um, 
when I got back from from my Olympics, I people talk about the post Olympic blues, and I've never really had them because I immediately went out sharing uh, the medals and sharing what I've learned with other people, and and I and I've had many disappointments, ups and downs, like all of us. You know, I got I got the three medals, but there was a lot of races I didn't medal in, and a lot of races where I did really really bad in, and you know, a lot of moments all in between. And, uh, but anyway, just to share and <clears throat> use our experiences and use what we've learned to help someone else is such a good feeling. And I realized after speaking the last 20 years since my Olympics is that I, it's actually become more rewarding than the medals themselves. I actually found something that feels better than winning a gold medal. And that's helping others and serving others and using what we've learned to help others. And so I, I appreciate that you had that opportunity to do that and, uh, and experience that also. Um, I think that really is what motivated me the second half of my career is how I could use swimming to help others. You know, who's God gonna put in front of my path today and in my lane today, in my race today? And you know, what, 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 what you just kind of open and excited and expectant and mm -hmm. it is nice to kind of have the medals behind us and the Olympics behind us that we'll always have. So that's why it is probably a little bit harder for folks who never made the Olympics and just fell short. Like that was some of our friends went through that and that's just really, really hard. Um, but it is, but when you have purpose and you know God has you in a certain place, a certain time for a reason, you're able to weather the ups and downs a lot better. And so I'm just really proud of you for, for figuring that out also. Mm -hmm. So not always easy in the moment, but um, definitely knowing that who, where my identity is and knowing what my purpose is helps me stay grounded and keeps me, it gives me joy in, in those hard times. Yeah. Now, being physically fit is important. Being mentally fit is important. But um, I think being spiritually fit is important too. We do the physical disciplines, the mental disciplines. We also do the spiritual disciplines. And so you don't always feel, you know, the joy of the Lord or this, this peace or this, uh, this calmness that everything's going to work out fine. We kind of have to do some little things that's, that help us get that mindset. I know for me, when I was on the road, Back when I was on the USA team, traveling internationally, I had my old Walkman. You know what the Walkman is, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're old enough to know what a Walkman is. But I would have I would have sermon tapes and the Bible on tape, and I would just listen to that, and it really helped me when I was on the road to keep the right mindset. And now, of course, we have everything on our smartphone where you can access, you know, the Bible and sermons and podcasts and you know everything you'd want to be encouraged spiritually and mentally and intellectually. So is there something you do when you're on the road that really helps you? Any little disciplines and habits and routines that really help you? I really like to listen to music and I always look forward to Fridays is where new music comes out on Apple Music. So I love to see the, the new music. Uh, my friend Darian Sanders actually just released a new song called Sun Will Rise and it's super uplifting and encourage everyone to listen to it. And so that has been in my head, especially the last match. I was playing that in my head. We'll wake up singing it in my head. Um, and that's just the really cool thing about Christian community as well. It's just lifting each other up, holding each other accountable. And so um, love listening to Christian music that gives reminds me of my purpose. And then since we've been gone a long time, I'll tune into my ser the sermons back home. And uh, right now we're competing on Sunday, so it's not always exactly on Sunday mornings, but I watched my sermon just yesterday and God was still working in that and it was really powerful and um, really good to be reminded how important prayer is so um, and I of course I I think community is important as well and so FaceTiming my family or staying up to date with friends um, helps me stay focused as well yeah that's cool I love the modern technology where we can get all that stuff you know practically free and uh, stay encouraged, stay connected. I love it. Um, what's next on the horizon? You get to go home for Christmas for a little bit, back at Louisville. Um, and then what, what's next on your goals? 
I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm going to reevaluate after the ISL season finishes up, have a good long meeting with my coaches and I'm just going to take it one day at a time and not making any decisions yet. I was hoping that I would be persuaded towards something <laughs> by the end of this ISL season. <laughs> but honestly, I've really been enjoying it. I've been surprising myself each match and um, I am excited to have a, a nice vacation with my husband in January, thinking about getting a new puppy. And so I think some of those outside of the pool things are keeping me really excited and keeping me from stressing during these matches. So some fun outside of the pool things to look forward yeah. to for sure. <laughs> that's cool that's cool well I'm, I'm glad you're able to be home soon and uh but good luck this next week the last of the finals of isl season three any uh, any goals or predictions what we should look out for well we got, got to cheer for the cali condors um go doors and i i just want to keep sharpening things up i'd love to go a couple more best times and right now uh, it's, it's the talk of the town here, probably with some other people too, but I also wasn't selected for the short course worlds team. And so I want to go as fast as I can to show that maybe I should have been on the team. So <laughs> that's been, um, a, a small motivation, but for the most part, I just want to just do my best and enjoy racing while I'm here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't even want to go there. I don't know why some people <laughs> want to go to that team. I don't even know what to say about that. Right. But, <laughs> But I'm glad you have the opportunity to, to swim fast and make a few bucks and do great, great work. Uh, you're, you're salt and light to whatever team you're on and you're a natural Thank leader. You. And uh, we love watching you swim and we hope we get to do it a lot more in the future. But uh, thanks for all you've done for the USA team. Uh, gosh, six years now, that's incredible. And, uh, and, obviously, and obviously for Louisville, you know, the ripple effects at Louisville are still being felt, mm -hmm. which is cool. So we want to wish them the best too. Big fans of Arthur and all the teams there. But uh, well, Kelsey, I want to wish you a happy holidays and Merry Christmas. And Merry uh, Christmas to you and your to family catching. as well. Yeah, thanks. Well, hopefully we can do a clinic together. We're, we're way overdue for a clinic together. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we knew that. So if you want to have Kelsey to your, uh, to your team, you can contact us. Um, Kelsey, what's the Instagram that people can follow you on and keep up with you? My Instagram handle is Kelsey Worrell, W-H-I-R-L. Okay, cool. Any last shout outs to any sponsors and any folks out there that have helped you? Oh yeah, I've been with Tier for my entire professional career as well. So grateful for them sticking by me, believing in me. And they're my, my, my biggest sponsor. So just grateful for them and yeah. yeah. That's cool. All right. Well, thanks for your time and uh, good luck at ISL and Merry Christmas. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Josh. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on this Ultimate Swimmer podcast. We hope you enjoyed hearing from these Olympians and life champions and how certain habits and decisions help them on their journey. And they can help you too. If there is an Ultimate Swimmer from your team that you would like to nominate that we can recognize on our show, just email me at josh at joshdavis.com. That's josh at joshdavis.com. And tell us about how your ultimate swimmer is making a difference in your swimming community. And that's the goal, to make a difference and swim with purpose. Not only are you getting better, but you're helping those around you get better too. When you realize you were born for the water, born for greatness, and born to serve others, you are on your way to becoming an ultimate swimmer. I'm Josh Davis. Until next time, keep streamlining and keep smiling. See you around the pool soon.